What's up, people? Joe Winko here, your favorite Hawaiian guy. And here's my next episode of Joe Winko Talk. So, this is going to be a pretty strange and out there topic, but it's just something that I found interesting and something that popped into my mind recently. And for those of you who've been watching me on YouTube long enough, you should be used to this strange stuff by now. But before I get to what I'm going to be talking about, I just want to make one thing very clear. I honestly do not want to have children at all. I mean, I'm not fit to have children. I'm not fit to raise children or take care of children. Because raising and taking care of children, that's a pretty serious responsibility, honestly. And in all honesty, there's a lot of people who aren't fit to have children or raise children or adopt children who shouldn't be allowed to, really. And Plus, there's enough children being born every single day and enough people being brought into this world every single day. We already have 7 billion people, but I still thought that this was a really interesting topic and I still wanted to talk about it in this episode of Joe Winko Talk. There's another thing I should mention in this video. If you're under 18, you shouldn't be watching this because some adult topics are going to be discussed also. So just letting you guys know. So, as you can tell from the title of this video, this episode of Joe Winko Talk is going to be about whether two men can have a baby with their combined genetics. So, where do I begin on this? Way back in 2011 and 2012, back when I was 15 and 16, I was going on to a lot of chat rooms and I would always try to chat online with guys online because I was looking for a boyfriend back then. I still am now, but I honestly prefer the term lover and partner instead of the term boyfriend really, but that's what I called it back then. Anyhow, back in 2011 when I was 15, I ended up crossing paths with this one guy in the chat room, this guy who lived in Finland. And for those of you who don't know, Finland is a country in Northern Europe. I mean, at that time, I never even heard about it because I'm not really educated on Europe. I mean, I focus more on the USA. But he lived in Finland, which is one of the Scandinavian countries, I believe. The place where people have really pale white skin and blonde hair and blue eyes. He told me that his name was Fred, and he was this 18 year old guy living in Finland, and he told me that he was looking for a boyfriend too. And usually when I would talk to guys online, they usually would just want to like talk sexual stuff about me, and then after we're done having cyber sex, they ditch me, and then I never hear from them again. But Fred was different. I mean, don't get me wrong, we definitely did talk about a lot of sexual stuff. But he actually kept emailing me over and over again, like every day throughout the rest of 2011, and even through 2012, and... We talked about a lot of different stuff, like, because I was interested in learning about Finland, because I'm actually part Scandinavian myself, um, yeah, like, I always say, what's up, people, your favorite Hawaiian guy, but I'm actually mixed with a ton of stuff, in case you guys haven't noticed, and I wanted to learn more about the country of Finland. I never really asked him any history questions about Finland, because who the hell asks someone that, really? But I used to ask him how his uh, life is and everything, and he told me that it gets cold in Finland, and that it snows there. And I also told him, well, same with me, I live in Wisconsin, it's cold here too, and it snows here also. So that's another thing that we had in common, and I thought that was interesting because of my autism mind. So the first time we started talking in the chat room, what we would always tell each other is uh, ASL, which means age, sex, location, and he told me that he was an 18-year-old man living in Finland, and then I would start asking him what does he look like and how tall is he, and he sent me a picture of himself, he emailed it to me, and I thought he was really handsome. 
he reminded me of Bo from Scare, and that's actually who Bo was actually based off of, kinda. He was based off of Fred from Finland, because Fred had the blonde hair and the blue eyes, exactly like Bo, except his hair wasn't like that. It was different from Bo's hair, really. He kind of looked like that one actor from Shake It Up. I forgot what his name was, but I'll have it typed on the screen. I'll add that in during post-production. That's what he looked like, except he had these really, really bright blue, shiny eyes. And I thought he was handsome right away. So then me and him started talking to each other, and I... He asked me how tall I was, and I told him that I was six foot one. At that time, I was six foot one. I'm six foot three right now. That's a thing that a lot of people don't realize about me. They always assume that I'm really short for some reason. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. He actually told me that he was seven feet tall, and I was like, are you serious? And he said, yeah, I'm seven feet tall. And... I was kind of shocked and in disbelief because I didn't know it was possible for people to actually be that tall. And another thing is, I rarely ever meet a guy who's taller than I am. Because I remember back in kindergarten, there were some kids who were actually taller than me, but I reached my growth spurt like extremely fast, like way sooner than I should have. But there were some kids who were actually call taller than me back in kindergarten. And back then, it used to make me mad whenever I ran into a guy who was taller than me, because I always wanted to be the tallest kid all the time. But nowadays, and even back then, it actually kind of turned me on a bit, because I rarely ever encounter a guy who's actually taller than I am. So when he told me that he was seven feet tall... I was kind of in disbelief at first, and I was like, really? And he said, yeah, I have pictures to prove it. So he sent me a picture of him with his classmates, like a picture they took of him at school. And then I see him, and he's towering over all of them. And the picture looked real. It didn't look like he was standing on anything. And I also saw how long his arms were. And then I was like, oh, wow, he is really tall. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. So... Me and him were keeping in touch with each other, and we were talking over and over again. And then, for some reason, this one thought popped into my head. And I usually never think this about any guy, but for some reason, this popped into my head. I definitely don't think this about any girl, either, because I'm not into girls. I started thinking about how handsome he was, and how he was, like, seven feet tall, and how I was six foot one. And... My adoptive parents, before they knew that I was gay, they always told me that I should find a tall woman to date and a tall woman to marry so we have tall children and so we don't have short children at all. That's what they always told me as I was growing up. And then I actually talked about this with them one day and I told them that I told him, I would love to have children with you, but even back then, I didn't want children at all, but I told him that I thought it would be really cool if me and him could have children with each other and put our DNA with each other, and for some reason, we enjoyed thinking about that way more than you guys probably were thinking. And he said that he thought that would be really awesome too, and he said, oh yeah, we would have really tall and really beautiful children also. Because I actually have uh, green eyes. Let me show you. Most people don't notice this, but here's a close-up picture of my one of my eyes. Yeah, my eyes are dark green, and that really is my eye in that picture. And let me show it to you guys again. Okay, this is gonna hurt. What the fuck? Is this out of battery? Let me use my iPod light instead. Or I could just use that light. You could probably see it fine enough. Alright. See that right there? My eyes are dark green. Or medium green. Sometimes they change colors. Like becoming a lighter shade of green than dark green. But my eyes are medium to dark green. And that's actually considered a recessive gene. And I'm going to be getting back to that soon. 
but his eyes were like really crystal colored blue and that's also considered a recessive gene and usually it's like most people have brown eyes which is like super common because that's a dominant gene but neither of us had brown eyes we had crystal colored blue eyes and medium green green eyes if me and him actually had a baby with each other our offspring would actually be very gorgeous honestly because he had these crystal colored blue eyes and i have these medium green eyes which are both recessive genes so <laughs> yeah i thought that'd be really awesome and i even remember telling him about that and we were both getting excited thinking about that really but then we started talking about how that would be possible because it's not like I could just lay back and have him ride my cock and burst a load into his ass and then he gets pregnant and then nine months later he has a baby. I mean, even though we were talking about that and we talked about how hot that would be, uh, just minus the baby part, that could be possible, but you can't get another guy pregnant at all. However, I actually ended up looking it up online, and it actually is possible for two men to put their genes in one offspring. It was uh, something I read on Quora. I believe that's how it's pronounced. It's a site where random people post questions and then experts answer them. And one person actually asked, how can two males have a baby with the same genes? And one expert actually answered that question, and I'm going to show it to you guys and read it to you guys right now. Here it is. So here's the question. How can two males have a baby with the same genes? And here's what the expert answered. A baby from two males, you mean? You'd have to have an X-bearing sperm from one of them and insert it into the gene gnome into an egg cell which has its own genome removed then fertilize it with sperm from the other male i'm assuming we're talking about humans or at least mammals the resultant embryo would get its nuclear genome from the two male parents and its mitochondria from the woman who donated the egg very interesting that's actually how it would work so as you guys know from that description that I just read, it definitely wouldn't be the old-fashioned way that people make babies or whatever you want to call it. It seems more like this is something that would be done in like a laboratory or something like that. But I wonder if that's all actually possible. I mean, I'm not sure if they ever done anything like this before. But that would be really cool if that was possible, because me and him would be able to have children with each other, and they would be super tall, because we're both really tall guys. I mean, he's a lot taller than I am, but I'm still really tall compared to normal standards, at least. I'm six foot three. he was seven feet tall, so there's a high chance that our children would be seven feet. But I thought that was really cool and really interesting. So another thing I want to discuss in this episode of Joe Winko Talk is how genetics work. So remember, this man was Scandinavian, so he was really pale and really white, and he had blonde hair, like platinum blonde hair, and crystal-colored blue eyes. And as you can see, in case you don't notice, I'm not really looking white right now for some reason, even though I haven't been outside in like three or four days but um i'm not really white either i told you guys earlier that i mix with a ton of stuff and i don't have blonde hair at all however this is how genetics work in the sims 2 which i'm assuming is the same way they work in real life maybe an expert who's watching this video can correct me if i'm wrong i mean since that's the whole point of my youtube videos to start a conversation with you guys First thing we should cover is eye color. In The Sims 2, there's dominant genes and recessive genes. Not the kind of dominant from fat life. I'm talking about genetics right now, so get that out of your head for a moment. So, when a person with dominant genes has an offspring with someone who has recessive genes, 
the offspring or the baby will display the dominant gene, but will still be carrying the recessive genes. Therefore, if they have a baby with someone who's carrying recessive and dominant genes, their baby will have a chance of showing the recessive genes. I'll give you guys an example of that soon. In The Sims 2, there's multiple different eye colors. There's brown eyes, light brown eyes, dark brown eyes, dark blue eyes, gray eyes, green eyes, and light blue eyes. It's always the dark genes, like the dark brown eyes and the dark blue eyes, that are the dominant genes, and the recessive genes are the light colored eyes, like green, light blue, gray, and light brown. Those are the recessive genes, but dark brown and dark blue are the dominant genes. So if someone has dark brown eyes, but their mom had light blue eyes and their dad had dark brown eyes, that person with the dark brown eyes, their children that both of those parents had, can still be carrying the light blue eye gene. Therefore, if they get with someone who has light blue eyes, it's possible for their child to have light blue eyes because they are carrying the light blue eyes gene even though that parent themselves didn't have light blue eyes. And also possible for them to get with another person with dark brown eyes, but if one of their parents also had light blue eyes, it's still possible for their children to have light blue eyes if both of the people with brown eyes had children together. Hope that makes sense, really. The same thing with hair color, honestly. If a person with if a person with brown or black hair has a parent who had black hair and has another parent who has blonde hair, they could still be carrying the blonde hair gene. And even if they get with someone else who has brown hair or black hair, if that other person has another parent who has a blonde hair gene, their children can come out with blonde hair even though both parents have black hair. That's how it works in The Sims 2, and I'm pretty sure that's how it works in real life, but I'm sure it's more complex than that. Oh yeah, another thing. Um, so I don't have blonde hair, but this man had blonde hair, this man who I was talking to from Finland. And if we were to put our genes in one offspring together, there's a chance that the baby would have blonde hair, because as I said earlier, I'm actually mixed with Scandinavian myself, and my great-grandparents actually had platinum blonde hair. That's something that my biological uncle told me about when I was living with them in the Dominican Republic. He said that they had platinum blonde hair because they were from Sweden and Norway and everything, and... Finland also. So it's very possible that I'm also carrying the recessive blonde hair gene, but we would find out if we had children with each other. But it would be more likely that the children would have dark hair, but if we had like a whole bunch, we would be bound to come out with one that has blonde hair, really. Another thing about how genetics work in The Sims 2 is skin color. So in The Sims 2, there's light skin, medium light skin, medium dark skin, and dark skin. That's all four of the skin tones in order, the default skin tones. Now, how this works, actually, is if you have a person with light skin and they have a offspring with a sim that has dark skin, and out of all four of those skin tones... That child has a 25% chance of either getting light skin, medium light skin, medium dark skin, or dark skin. And I think it might be a little different in real life, but that's technically how it kind of works in real life. Usually, most of the time, when a white person in real life has a baby with a dark skin person, they will most likely have a baby who's in between black and white. However, skin tone can actually change. I mean, I'm a pure example of that, as you see in this visual that I have displayed for you guys. <laughs> Hopefully it makes someone laugh, at least, besides myself.
However, if me and the Scandinavian guy, if it was possible for both of us, well, it is possible. But if me and him put our genes into one baby, the baby would most likely have light white skin because I actually am part white myself. And in some of my pictures, I even look white in a few of them that I'm showing right now, just to clarify that for you guys. So most likely our children would be white. There's a chance that the kid could have dark skin, like mine, that's as dark as they will get. Or darker if they spend uh, if they spend some time on Virginia Beach, as I did a couple hours before I took that picture back in summer of 2019. But most likely they will have light skin, like the Scandinavian guy, because I'm half white myself. Well, I don't know the exact percentage, but I'm part white myself, and he's definitely full-blooded white. And if we had a baby together, and if he spent time on Virginia Beach, and he's not wearing sunblock, he most likely would burn up and wouldn't be able to look like I look in that picture. But, yeah, let's move past that. I'm not exactly sure how height works, but assuming because both me and him were really tall, our offspring would most likely be really tall also. Also, this man had like a really chiseled face, which I thought was really gorgeous, honestly. I like guys who have chiseled faces. Me, on the other hand, now I don't mean to talk down about myself, but... My face isn't really as narrow and chiseled as I wish it was. I mean, I have kind of... Well, not really. I mean, on camera, it shows up differently. I look good on camera. But when I look in the mirror... Well, it depends what angle I look at myself at. My face seems like a bit round right now, currently. I mean, some parts of it are chiseled, but... Yeah. Not exactly sure how facial features... Not exactly sure how facial features are passed down between offspring, but hopefully they would get a chiseled face like him. Then they would look absolutely gorgeous then, really. However, there is a major downside to this also. If me and him actually put our genes into a baby, which is actually the main reason why I don't want to have children at all either. Well, another major reason why I don't want to have children. As some of you guys should know by now, if you've been watching me long enough on YouTube, I'm actually insulin dependent. I'm a type 1 diabetic. That's a medical condition that's inherited and passed down. And in addition to that, I'm also autistic, which isn't a problem at all, really, but it makes things more difficult since the world isn't made for people with autism. That's the only difficulty. If the world was made for people with autism, it would be much easier for me, but it definitely isn't. But in addition to autism, I also have ADHD and some other mental conditions that I don't feel comfortable listing on camera right now. But I told him about the mental conditions I have, because I knew about them back then. That's when around the time I was first diagnosed in 2011. He also suffered with some mental conditions also. Actually, 80% of all people living have some sort of mental condition that they suffer from, so it's extremely common. But either way, those might end up getting inherited by our offspring. However, there is a chance that all the medical problems and mental health problems that I have wouldn't affect our offspring at all because one thing you guys have to remember about me is that my biological parents were drug addicts both of them were and I think that caused something to happen with my genetics that's why I have autism because my biological mother was really really young when she had me much younger than she should have been to have any child so and when young mothers have a baby like teenagers have babies, the their offspring are more likely to have conditions like autism and diabetes and other conditions like that because you're not supposed to be having kids when you're only 13 or 14 or 15 years old. And I know that's pretty ironic because 
this is back when I was 15 and 16, when I was talking to this guy online about the children we would have with each other. But we weren't doing it for real. And unless we have access to a laboratory and an egg cell donated from a woman who is willing to donate her egg cell to a 15 and an 18 year old so they could have a baby and who wanted to be a surrogate for our baby, wouldn't seem like that would ever happen. So <laughs> yeah, just making that clear to you guys. So that's the thing. I don't think that they would, that our offspring would have had those conditions at all. I mean, if that's strictly what brought them about. But it's something that we can discuss in the comments. I'm thinking a genetic expert might watch this video and analyze it, and we can go back and forth on what would happen. I mean, it's a learning it's a learning point, not only for you guys, but also for me, because it's something I'm interested in. I know how Punnett squares work, but I don't feel like explaining them in this episode of Geowinko Talk, so we won't be discussing that at all. But anyhow, either way, I don't want to have children because, well, because of my medical conditions that I have, I don't want the kid to inherit those. But even without those, I'm not really fit to be a parent. I'm definitely not fit, because... If you have children, you have to put that child's life before your own, honestly, because you brought them into this world. You're the reason why they exist, so you have to help them through life. It's your responsibility, and you owe that to them. Even after they become adults, you still owe that to them, and you still have to help them, really. A lot of people will disagree with me on that last part that I mentioned, but it's absolutely true, honestly. And how they grow up depends on you. Even if you aren't the one that raised them, you're the one who made them able to go be raised by whoever else because you didn't raise them yourself. That's an important thing that I want to mention in this video. But I never plan on having children. As I said earlier, there's enough children being brought into this world every day. But I just thought it was interesting how two men can put their genes in a baby, but that's another thing that they would actually need. They would actually need an egg cell that's harvested from a female, but I'm assuming the female wouldn't have any genetic effect on the baby. I mean, sh she kind of would because her mitochondria would come from her because our mitochondria DNA, that comes from our mother's but I'm not exactly sure what the mitochondria DNA actually affects. Does that affect their hair color? Does it affect their eye color? Does that affect their facial features or anything? I mean, one other answer I read online was what you could do is, like, if this guy had a sister, we could extract an egg cell from her and mix it with my sperm, and then we would be able to have a child with both of our genetics that way. But I wouldn't want to do that, because then I would be, I wouldn't be combining my genetics with his genetics, I'd be combining my genetics with his sister's genetics. And that's extremely awkward, in my opinion at least. That's the only thing. Even though they would most likely be similar, still, wouldn't want to do that. Another method they could do for that is to find a way to convert, convert a male sperm cell into a egg cell. But that sounds a lot more complicated than how I explained it. So we'll just leave that up to the super smart people. So yeah. But yeah, <laughs> that's basically it for this episode of GeoWinko Talk. It was definitely a weird topic, really, but it's something that I felt like talking about. And as I mentioned earlier, if you guys have been watching me on YouTube long enough, you should be used to this strange stuff that comes out of my autism mind by now. So, let me know what you thought of this episode of Joe Winko Talk. Do you really think it's possible for two men to have offspring with their combined genes? Do you think it's actually possible for them to do that today? I mean, I bet it would cost a lot. So let me know what you thought of this episode of Joe Winko Talk, and let me know what you thought of everything I explained in this episode of Joe Winko Talk. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me ramble about genetics and, and having offspring 
with a European boy who I never even talked to anymore. We just kind of lost contact. We didn't really... Nothing bad happened between us. We just kind of drifted apart over time. It's kind of tragic how that happens. I mean, if we would have both both been living in the same area, we... Oh, oh God, yeah. We probably would still be together today. But, unfortunately, that didn't happen. But one day... So I guess we won't be bringing any super tall people with gorgeous eyes and pale skin into the world any time at all. But, oh well. So let me know what you thought of everything I explained in this episode of Joe Winko Talk, and make sure to comment, since that's the whole point of my YouTube videos, to start a conversation with you guys. So don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. So that's it. Peace out, people.